To handle partitioning, we need to implement a solution separately from our analysis services database development. Specifically, we can implement dynamic partitioning to create a solution that adapts to the data that we have in the source data that we're using to load the analysis services database. Now, there are many ways that we might approach the development of this solution, but one way involves developing a query that produces records defining each partition. In the example we explore in this module, the query produces columns that will become the ID and name for the partition that we want to create in the Analysis Services database. Here we have the same values for both columns, but that's not required. It is important, though, to make sure that each partition ID is unique. Here we're using the year and month as a type of smart key to uniquely identify each partition. Then we have the WHERE clause that we're going to associate with each partition that gets created. Our solution uses query binding when creating the partition. The SELECT and FROM clauses for the query are the same for each partition, but the WHERE clause differs for each partition by using a different date boundary. In this case, we're using the same end date, the 31st of each month. Now, of course, there aren't really 31 days in each month, but the results give us the correct data in each partition with a straightforward query. We also need to set the slice for the partition, so here we have the unique name for the month that corresponds to the partition data described in the WHERE clause. It's important to set the slice correctly for each partition to get optimal query performance. As part of our dynamic partitioning solution, we'll combine the result set from the query that we just defined with an XMLA script that creates each partition. An easy way to start this process is to create one partition with query binding in our cube and then deploy it. Then in Management Studio, we can script out the XMLA to create the partition and we'll use this as a template. By the way, this is just a portion of the entire script. The full XMLA script to create the partition doesn't fit on one slide, but what we see here is the relevant portion for our dynamic partitioning solution. We need to replace the partition ID and name, and the WHERE clause in the query definition, and the slice and we'll replace those with placeholder tokens. Similarly, we can create a process partition XMLA script and replace the partition ID with the token. After we create the partition query and the XMLA scripts, we can store the SQL and XMLA in a configuration table. Now, each row of the table corresponds to a specific database, cube, and measure group, and for each row, we can update the table to store the partition SQL script in one column, and we do the same with the XMLA to create a partition and the XMLA to process a partition. And optionally, we can set a flag to control whether or not we want to delete obsolete partitions in the cube. Once we have the dynamic partitioning configuration table in place, we can build integration services packages to create and process the partitions. Now, if you're not familiar with integration services, you can view my integration services fundamentals course on Pluralsight to learn more about it. We can have one package to create partitions, and we'll walk through this package in more detail in the demonstration, but in general, it reads the partition configuration information from the configuration table. Specifically, it's getting the database, cube, and measure group name, as well as the SQL that determines how many partitions are needed for the current fact table data, and the XMLA script template that we need to create partitions. If we have multiple databases and cubes and measure groups to process, we'll loop through each one of these as a separate partition configuration, and in each loop, the first step is to execute the SQL for the partition. That returns a result set with partition ID, partition name, where clause, and slice ID. Then we start another loop for each of these partitions defined in the result set. And in that loop, we first check to see if the partition for the current iteration of the loop is already in the cube. If it is, we don't want to create it again. But if it's not there, then we use a script task to take the XMLA script template we have and use a replace function to update the placeholder tokens in the template with the values for the current partition. And then we execute the resulting XMLA script as part of a DDL task. When we process all the partitions, we then have another script task that runs only if we set the obsolete partitions flag in the configuration table. And this script task checks to see if there are any partitions in the cube that don't match the partitions that the fact table requires. In other words, if we have archived data in the fact table, and so that data is no longer there, but there is still a partition in the cube, 
we need to delete that partition so that the cube matches the source fact table. And as we'll see in the demonstration, the package to process partitions works similarly, except that we don't have the step to delete obsolete partitions.